It's on one of the coldest days of the year. Uh, not yet, but it won't be the coldest. And Happy New Year. We're glad to have you here on January 2nd. If you're seeing this any other day, we're not live, so don't call in the show. But since we are live for most people that are seeing this, there's the phone number, 651-747-3838. If you have any comments or questions, feel free to call in. Uh, if you don't want to call in, you could email me at speechlessmn at gmail.com uh, with suggestions for the show, uh, comments on the show. Uh, everything's welcome whether you like it or not. That's, that's fine with me. I don't, I don't care. <laughs> Give us your input. Uh, you know, I had some guests on a couple weeks ago, uh, probably a month ago, attorney uh, Michelle McDonald and Sandra grazzini Rucky on a horrific divorce case. It just doesn't end. A whole lot of issues are going on, parental rights, uh, bad judges. Uh, so we're going to dig into other issues. Some federal actions have been filed with the U.S. Supreme Court and federal district court. Uh, the federal district court, based on the behavior of Judge uh, Knutson, David Knutson in Dakota County. Uh, so that's going to be a big piece of the show. But before we got, get into that, there's a movie coming out called The Divorce Corp, as in corporation movie. And actually you can go to the website divorcecorp.com dot com and uh, see the movie, uh, our trailer for the movie, and it will be showing at the Invergrove Heights Theater January 10th through the 17th. And I'm going to show you a clip on that and then I'm going to bring on our guests and uh, give us a little more information on that movie. So if uh, we're ready in the control room there, uh, let's uh, show the trailer to Divorce Corp. very frustrating to have gone for help and then come out with your family destroyed. We have serious problems in our family law court system. Getting divorced is far from easy. Litigation lasted for over a year. I was married only four months and my divorce has lasted over six and a half years. Close to eight years. Eight years. Why is divorce so difficult? People can get as much justice as they can afford. Most people cannot afford any justice at all. What's wrong with that? This is a business. The more you charge, the more people are willing to pay. They didn't give me a lawyer. Pay this $11,000 or go to jail. It really got to the end of the line for me. And I said to the litigants, I want you to know, after two hours, we will have spent more than most people in this courthouse make in a year. Your home, your, your valuables are all going to be sold to pay the lawyers and people like me. Even though I was acquitted, he still made a decision to take my son away from me. His birthday was last week and I didn't get to see him. What you have is a tinderbox and the lawyers are throwing gasoline on that fire. The system is designed to create conflict. I received a phone call for another 25000 He'd be able to give us what we wanted. Extortion? Family court results in more violence than any other area of law. Deaths, suicide, murder. No jury, just the one biased judge. The judge says, even if you win, you have to pay. The whole thing is just insane. Follow the money. a very interesting movie and again it's being shown January 10th through January 17th and I uh, just want to now welcome my guest uh, attorney Michelle McDonald and Sandra Grazzini Rucky uh, thanks for coming on the show again but let's let's talk about this uh, movie coming up you're actually gonna um, be part of uh, the conversation after the movie is shown right on January 12th. Right, Tim. Uh, the producer, his name is Joe Sorge, okay. uh, contacted me. He had heard about uh, Sandra's case. Mm -hmm. um, the movie was already complete. Okay, so I you're not in the movie. <laughs> we're not in the movie, <laughs> but he had talked about doing a post CD and a book just because of what happened to Sandra, adding, adding to the movie. 
Okay. Uh, so uh, uh, the, um, on January 12th, I will be doing a Q&A after the movie at Inver Grove uh, Theater. Okay. And, and how long I'll, is this supposed to last, the Q&A? Uh, I'm not sure. Okay. Um, I believe it starts at 7.15, so it's after the movie. Okay. And maybe before the second showing. Uh, there'll be more uh, posted on divorcecorp.com. Okay. Um, and Steve Erickson of Erickson Mediation right. will also be on the panel along with Ronowski um, okay. of the Collaborative Law Institute. All so right. um, all of the people, uh, Michelle McDonald's Family Innocence, right. dedicated to keeping families out of court, mm -hmm. uh, resolving conflicts and injustices peacefully. We have Steve Erickson, who I always say invented mediation. He's been mediating. Right. He's the third, me yeah, the third mediator ever in the country, mm -hmm. Tim. Mm -hmm. And over 30 years mediating, uh, trained mediators all over the country and the world. And then we have um, Ron Owski, who is a pr uh, predecessor of Stu Webb. Oh, and you okay. know Stu, yeah, and right. you know Ron, and you know right. Steve. Uh, and he'll be uh, on the panel as well. Okay. So, Is that the only date that they're having a question and answer uh, time? I believe so. That oh, would just okay. be on January 12th. Oh, well, that'd be yeah. very much well worth it, it. It's opening all over the country January 10th. Okay. So January 12th is the day I believe some of the producers are going to be here. Oh, uh, wow. The producers of the movie and people that are, were very involved in its production. Okay. So. Wow, that'd be a big, uh, that's a Sunday, right? Yeah. I believe it is. That's a Sunday. Yeah. Opens on Friday, June 10th. Okay. We're not in it. <laughs> not in this one. Not yeah, in this January, one, but we, January, we, we have been contacted we've about been contacted okay. part well, two. I'm sure they got plenty of information uh, for a sequel. They, they do. I'm just watching that. Matter of fact, they can do Divorce Court Minnesota. Yeah. Corp Minnesota. Minnesota, right. <laughs> Divorce Court Minnesota. There's enough, there's enough stuff there that uh, uh, could fill. And, the, you know, watching that trailer brings tears to my eyes when, you know, the woman says, uh, I've gone for help and you come out with your family destroyed. Yeah. I mean, how many of us <laughs> out there right. have gone for help? I've been practicing 26 years and come out with your family destroyed. Right. And uh, obviously, um, Sandra's family has been completely obliterated. Right. Yeah. Well, in by, a by the system. Unbelievable manner. Absolutely. Yeah. Just uh, bizarre, to yeah. say the least. Yeah. Well, but, you know, a little bit more about Sandra's case. She well, was, let's get into the, yeah. her case. And <coughs> yeah, movie's was, done. Yeah. Now we can deal with the case. Yeah. She was already divorced in May of 2011. Right. So she was already divorced. Okay. And among other things, was awarded her home mm -hmm. um, and also um, uh, awarded custody uh, joint I mean, I'm sorry, sole legal, sole physical custody of her five children. And I'll have Sandra name them for you because your five children. Um, Nico, who's 17. Samantha, who's 15. Gianna is 14. Nia is 12. And Gina will be 11 in a couple weeks. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So already awarded um, from Judge Warmerger in Dakota County Court, a cu sole custody. And... Uh, Parenting time was going to be as agreed upon, liberal, however uh, right. it worked out. And so there, <clears throat> there really wasn't much conflict in this divorce in mm. the process of going through it. Uh, your uh, ex-husband basically said whatever you decide there, and you were very generous because mm -hmm. you kept one house and he got the other three. Correct. <laughs> okay, I kept one, <laughs> he kept the other three. <laughs> and All right. I, I believe it was after the divorce that Sandra pursued and obtained an order for protection okay. against her husband. Um, one of the uh, things that happened is, um, and this is, you know, at any point in time, it, it's, it's an adversarial process. Right. So she thought she was done. She had to go in for an order for protection. It was granted by Judge Wormiger for a two-year Judge year period. for a two-year okay. period, correct. Period. And uh, what and there were a, a few violations. Uh, one in, of the uh, most severe things that happened to Sandra is, and maybe you can explain what happened around the kitchen table that day um, with yeah. the, her and her, her five children. Right. 
with the gun, my um, ex-husband, a former husband, um, threatened to kill my five children and myself. He said he had six bullets, one for each of the children and one for me. Mm -hmm. You weren't there when that happened? Yes, you, I you was were there. there. My children okay. were there. I was there. He was very clear what his intention was. And, and the judge heard that, too. The, the judge children was, told the judge. The that. children told the judge. Um, they told him step by step of what he said, what he did. Um, I told him it was reported to the Lakeville Police Department. And wasn't there a, uh, a voicemail? There, there was also a, um, a voice message left. To and who? he said, like I promised. And uh -huh. there was... It was, was left that? to my daughter. It was left to your daughter. Left to my daughter, which as soon as it was done, we brought it immediately to the police and my attorney. Uh -huh. um, and then they confirmed that it did come from his phone. Wow. And he said, like I promised, and then there was six gunshots. W one for you and one each for the five yep. kids. Just like he had promised earlier. And it was from him. And it confirmed that it came from him. Okay. And so, so, so what happened that next is that... Um, an attorney, um, Mr. Recky got an attorney, her name was Lisa Elliott, and she uh, proceeded to try to reopen the divorce. Okay, which can be, but this is too soon for a reopening. Mm -hmm. My understanding was less than a year, right? Yes, yeah. right, it was less than a year, and it was, was reopened, but oddly, um, what I'm learning as I continue to research this is that Judge David Knutson, uh, before even an evidentiary hearing, uh, did a, a, a quite an unusual thing in, in two court files. Now, as you know, in Dakota County, or you may not know, in Dakota County, <laughs> and I've confirmed I this. Know. I confirmed <laughs> this by having practiced for 26 yeah. years and yeah. having been a litigant mm -hmm. in Dakota County, and I confirmed it with um, the uh, court administrators there that... Uh, it's random judges. Right. So I've been involved in cases. They, they don't assign judges right off the bat. I've been involved in cases where I've had several hearings along the way, and I get a different judge sure. each time. And you do have an opportunity, because when the judge is assigned, you have an opportunity to remove that judge and get a different one each but, time. But, but even the randomness is going to be based on who is currently in the family law or the juvenile section of the court. So like in Ramsey County, they're going to have maybe three judges set up for the family law side. So your randomness is going to be amongst those three judges, mm -hmm. not somebody who's, your randomness isn't going to be somebody in the criminal side. Y yeah, right. It's a little different though, Tim, in, in Dakota County, okay. because in, in Dakota County, you're, you, there's 19 judges, so you could ac actually have a case with 19 hearings, and all 19 of those judges could be on. Oh, really? Each time, yes. Okay. Unless a judge is permanently assigned, right? And that rarely happens mm -hmm. in Dakota County. It's rarely happened oh, over okay. the years. Mm -hmm. So uh, Knutson got assigned. Well, um, or. Did he take it? He, we don't, we don't really know. What I, what I saw when I, I go back, and, and I wasn't Sandra's attorney at the time, I took on this case. I met Sandra last year. Mm -hmm. Yesterday was our mm -hmm. first year anniversary of meeting. She came to a mm -hmm. family innocence event and um, just told me had, what had happened to her. She was homeless, um, had lost her children, and we haven't even talked yeah. about how, how, uh, um, how un happened. unthinkable or unimaginable right. Um, what happened to her can can be, and so I took the case to bring a constitutional challenge to right. the statute and to the order. Statute five eighteen. Yes, statute five. Which is the family law statutes yeah. in Minnesota. Right, right, mm -hmm. and also the order um, that Judge Knudsen. Um, you know, hindsight is twenty twenty. So as I I research the file, I I, I I'm looking at. At things, and I'm seeing that even before the evident entry hearing was scheduled to reopen, he actually filed an order in two separate files for a guardian ad litem. So, in a in a sense, he he reopened it before the hearing on reopening it. Oh, and wow. he actually, yeah, and mm -hmm. um, the in the order for protection file that had been granted by Judge Wormiger, as had the divorce mm -hmm. granted by Judge Wormiger. So before the evidentiary hearing came up, he filed an order appointing a guardian in those two files. 
So there wasn't, there was no chance of an agreement between the parties for a guardian. And, well, you had no chance of mm. knowing that a guardian was going to get, be assigned. No, it's just, just, yeah, there, there is no, I, I can't even discern the law that would allow a judge to do that, to just. There was no order before the court. No, kind of preside I mean, did, over. Did uh, the, uh, this Lisa Elliott, did she ask the judge to do this? Again, I'm looking at the record. Yeah. You know, that's, Nothing. it's not. Maybe, maybe not. Um, I'm just okay. saying, who, you know, it's, that's what we all, in hindsight, oh, how could this happen? Well, right. the fact of the matter is mm -hmm. that before the case was reopened, before an evidentiary hearing on the mm -hmm. case was reopened, right. and that evidentiary hearing took place before Judge Knudsen, he filed two separate orders, one in the divorce file, and one in the order for protection file. Mm -hmm. And this is just the first act uh, right. of, of just taking over a case. Mm -hmm. And it gets, it gets worse. That was just the first act pursuant to my research that he did. Yeah. So he wanted in and he got in. And at the um, evidentiary hearing, I don't think your attorney showed up. No, she did not show up the second day of the hearing. She just yeah. didn't show. Well, and why? Do we know why your attorney didn't show up? She did not show. The Knut fact of the matter is Knutson ordered that she me didn't to be pro show se. up. Pro se. I didn't asked okay. for an attorney. I requested an attorney. Um, begly, practically pleaded for an attorney, and he said, no, I'm ordering you to be pro se. It's my courtroom, and in family court, I can order you to be pro se. You are not obligated to have an attorney, so you will continue. Mm -hmm. I had nothing with me. I was sitting there, okay. so I mean, I didn't have anything, no papers, no pen. He just said, that's it. It's my, you know, again, we all know Knutson's famous line, but this time, he, what's, you know, what's his famous this line? is my playground. I can do what I want. Wow. We all know his, I mean, he's infamous for his line. Wow. Well, okay. Um, a person first coming into the courtroom and with very little notice, I, I, don't, I don't know how much notice you had for this, but. I've seen it happen a lot of times, the first time in. I don't have an attorney, haven't had time, will you let me get an attorney? I, I got some things, or I need a public defender. Of course, this is a civil case, so you don't get public defenders, even though your children are gonna be taken away from mm -hmm. you, potentially, which is outrageous to me, why you wouldn't get a public defender for that. Uh, but that's our courts, mm -hmm. uh, who cares about the kids. Well, and exactly. they're the court's kids anyway. They're not yours. Um, that's that's their mindset. Um, so I, I've seen it over and over. And judge goes, okay, I'm going to reschedule this. Get your attorney. No, I had an attorney. But you had an attorney. I had an attorney. She did not show up the second day of the trial. And Judge Knutson said, we were going to continue on. You're going to be pro se. And like I said, I pleaded with him for an attorney, anybody. And he said, no. Okay. And he forced me to, I had to put my, my former this husband. This is all while she had an OFP against yeah. him. I had to put my former husband on the stand and question him. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's the weirdest thing, having Knutson, Judge Knutson made me put, that was my witness, and I was to question him. Well, I didn't know what to say. And there's another whole aspect, because when you go in pro se, the court says, you know all the rules, and you have to abide by all the rules, and you'll be held accountable to all the rules. You know, mm -hmm. if you go in, that's what they tell you as going in pro se. The reality is, that's just a lie. And this kind you know, of and how does a pro se person challenge that? No, yeah. I don't know all the rules. I can't, can't hold me accountable for what I don't know. I'm trying to defend myself. I can't get an attorney, or you won't let me have one. And so th it's this fake system of, well, it's just <laughs> injustice. You can't defend yourself. And, and the judge in that situation is looking at destroying you just because you don't have an attorney. It's a charade. It is a charade, yeah. Simulated litigation. <laughs> mm -hmm. Oh, man. Simulated litigation. I don't know what else to call it. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Okay, so no attorney. You had to question your husband. Yeah. And you don't know the procedures. I didn't even know I was going to be representing myself until that moment when he told me I was going to be. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I went into court not knowing I was going to be my own attorney that day mm -hmm. until he told me I was going to be my own attorney that day. Yeah. So. And that was the beginning of the end. Uh, 
um, and and again, um, we this gets into our United States uh, federal court action. We have a hearing coming up uh, January 10th at 2 p.m. at the United Paul States, Courthouse. yeah, United States right. uh, Court downtown in St. Paul. And that case, so so that. Robert Street so and that, Kellogg. Yeah, yeah. So that you're not, <laughs> so that you're not confused. That is a case that Sandra and her five children brought uh, against David Knutson individually for violating civil and constitutional rights of Sandra and her children. Well, that's huge. Yeah, and it, it is huge, um, and you know, it's it's not to be. <laughs> You know, it's not to, to have the state court uh, decision reviewed, and we haven't even got into that. But what mm -hmm. happened to her, uh, in one day, her attorney called her. This was a different one, different attorney. Yep. Now. Can I say the name? Yeah. yeah. Uh, Lisa Henry of Chestnut and Cambrone. Okay. Yeah. Called her and said, you have two hours to leave your house. You have to be out by noon. You may take your suitcase that the airline owns. If you do not leave, you will be incarcerated. Mm -hmm. And do not tell your children. You had two hours. That had to be out by noon. And have no contact no with No contact children. with your children. Um, I, yeah, I, it's such a, I can't even describe what I was thinking. I couldn't tell the children. Um, they didn't want them to know anything. The police were going to arrest me and I was going to be incarcerated if I didn't comply. I didn't know what I had done. I mean, I, I don't, it was a pretty... And that was it. She just said, this is the way it is, and that's it. And that was on September 7th, 7th 2012. 2012. 2012. And this is day 482. So that was and you four, haven't seen your kids since. Have not seen 482 yeah. days ago, you know, this happened to her. So. Well, how, how can this happen? I mean, I can see where they can do an order, but usually <clears throat> you got some notice, but there, there would have been a hearing some kind of hearing, but there wasn't. There would have been some kind of a motion, some kind of right. a hearing. And if this uh, was this wasn't an OFP, wasn't no. an OFP. No. It was in a uh, divorce that had already occurred. Uh, it was just um, you know the, basically what we learned is the judge took a phone call. So it was an ex parte phone call. Phone call. Um, participants in the phone call. Um, some banter, some talk, what are we going to do? Was and, your attorney and, part of the phone call? <laughs> what you, yeah, her attorney was part of the phone call. Okay. But what you need to understand is that uh, also that I think children, <laughs> this is the most unthinkable right. part, is that a non-party, somebody that wasn't even a party to her divorce. Somebody not a, requesting the kids. No. A, a not requesting the kids was to have... Uh, temporary sole legal and sole physical custody of her kids and move into her home and care for the kids there. That was the idea. I've seen a lot of the laws being established that have given more strength to third party people coming in and taking custody of kids. This person didn't even ask. Didn't even there was ask. nothing before the There court. was no third party, you know, I'm very familiar with third party custody petitions. Mm -hmm. There was no... Um, which uh, the first juvenile, party would yeah. be the mom and dad. Child protection, yeah, yeah. you know, they would come in and maybe place your children in foster care, you know, if, if there was uh, a need for protection of the children, which there wasn't. There was no allegations of abuse, that she was abusive. And, you know, up until that time, um, you know, she had, uh, well, you, you can tell them, she had lived in the same home for 14 years. Mm -hmm. um, her children went to the same school district in Lakeville, for all of their schooling. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, they went to the same churches. Mm -hmm. They all same had their doctors, sacraments. Sa sacraments, everything. Mm -hmm. yeah. So she was pretty much, at, had the, the best ca custody case you could possibly have. Mm -hmm. And uh, for her to get a phone call like this and have to leave her home by noon that day and leave her children um, really, it's an order that she abandoned w her children. Was there a 
hearing within 30 days or 45 no days nope. to nothing. nothing because in an OFP you you, you have yep. one of those two options depending absent on the all OFP. jurisdiction I mean we try to you know in hindsight we could try to say well why did this happen and maybe this happened you know when you when you're talking about hmm. a due process violation right. what you have to do is you sit there and you you know, as an attorney, I, I could probably take an order and say, well, maybe they sent it here, or maybe they did this, and kind of map out. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, if you have to sit there and try to map out, she got no notice of any hearing. Right. Um, she just got a phone call that said, you need to leave your home. Now, if you look at the order, and I don't know that if you have it here. No, I don't. If you look at the order, the order is, um, you, the court administrator mailed it out on September 7th. The order was signed by the judge on September 7th. Mm -hmm. Okay, and it says by noon that day on September 7th, you are to vacate your home. And by noon on September 7th, you are to um, have no contact whatsoever with your kids, even by third parties, even at their school, which me meant she couldn't even contact the uh, caretakers or the daycares or the schools. And the conversation with the judge, the attorney and the, the two attorneys and the judge, that was also on September 7th, right? That, I believe, was on September 5th. Okay. And the first time she saw that was in this federal court action. Okay. The judge in his, um, what, what, what David Knudsen is claiming, and again, okay. we sued him individually. Yeah. And what I learned was that the attorney general Mm -hmm. Our state attorney general mm -hmm. is representing and defending him right. in his civil rights violation. Yeah. Um, I objected to that, but there are statutes and rules that say when judges are sued or court personnel is sued that they are uh, um, the attorney general represents them. So I was okay. I was shocked by that, but be that as it may. So it's me, one, one mm -hmm. attorney law firm, <laughs> yeah. uh, basically. Um, very small, um, handling her, um, Sandra's case at no pay up against mm -hmm. uh, the, the Attorney General. You know, mm -hmm. um, um, there, they uh, ended up uh, just doing a, um, a motion. Uh, they didn't answer our complaint at all. It was very lengthy. It was very detailed. Um, but it focused very much so on the civil rights violation that happened to her on September 7th. 2012, mm -hmm. uh, and so they're claiming uh, judicial immunity, that judges have immunity, and they can, and right. almost they see immunity as permission to violate civil and constitutional rights. Yeah. And I beg to differ. I never, I, I don't think that the United, you I know, our president should be. Either. Yeah. yeah, and I it shouldn't think, be that yeah. way. Mm -hmm. It absolutely, when, when they, uh, you know. When they go outside their jurisdiction, mm -hmm. that they're, they're mm -hmm. done. That, mm -hmm. I don't think there's any protection for mm -hmm. that. So, so, you know, even though, you know, the United States um, federal lawsuit is public, obviously it's about as public as every divorce action that's filed. I mean, I think there's about 5.7 million domestic mm -hmm. type uh, filings and orders a year. Mm -hmm. So nobody knows about it, really. I mean, right. I'm glad that you're sh you're doing a, a show on it because it, it 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 isn't out there that there's this federal uh, class action civil rights right. case uh, against a judge and that they're attacking it with immunity. So uh, the reason why it's important to to get it get it out is that um, my understanding is these are very easily snuffed out. Yes. Um, when you sue a judge, they claim immunities, even though I've done extensive mm -hmm. memos. I have my affidavit relating to mm -hmm. him usurping files, and I just gave you one example. Right. When he there's, came there's into the case, there's right. a lot more. Yeah. yeah. And now, yeah, yeah, okay. All right, on. we got a phone call here. Okay. So, uh, caller, uh, you have a comment or question? Thanks for the show, Tim. Yeah. My question is, we know that Senator... Dave Knutson, a Republican leader in the Minnesota Senate. His father, Senator Knutson, uh -huh. also a leader, a Republican leader out of Burnsville in the state Senate. Right. We know that uh, Senator Dave Knutson was appointed by Governor, Republican Governor 
Implementi, who really was a constitutionalist, lay strongly in the Constitution. Right. Can you talk a little bit about the state of mind of uh, Senator Judge David Knudsen? Was, was he cavalier? Was he annoyed with you? Was he angry that day? Was he inept? Was he joking around? How can we get a handle on somebody who is such a leader, whose family has been such a leader in public policy in Minnesota, Minnesota grew up with all these issues, uh-huh. and he behaved and acted and conducted himself in this manner? I'm trying to get a feeling of what was going on in his head. Uh, no, well, it's a, it's a good question. <laughs> I, I guess. I, I could read minds. I can't. <laughs> so, well, I can't. I, 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 I can only speculate. Uh, I know my, when I met Sandra, my, I, I limited my role because it was such a unthinkable, unimaginable order to just um, doing a motion um, relating to the Constitution. So what I did was I motioned to have the order vacated, all, all, all orders vacated, and relating to the constitutionality. I really thought he'd see the light. I thought, oh, I'm, I'm saving this guy because he had an opportunity oh, wow. to, yeah, he had an opportunity to, to just get out of this thing right. um, and to actually say, oh, I made an error. Let me just vacate this order and restore this family. And I repeatedly asked him to uh, uh, remove himself from the case and uh, restore mm -hmm. the family. Um, and well, I've, so that that part of the case, okay, that part of the worse. case, huh? Yeah. You say he came, it came back. He worse. came back worse. Oh, yes. worse. When she gave him a way out, and kind of you know, yeah. hey, yeah. step back. You might have made a mistake. You know, at least look at it. He came back tenfold in retaliation. Right. Well, you know, and to answer the caller's question, you made the statement, what's his famous line? This is my playground, I can do what I want. Okay, so there's his mentality. Mm -hmm. So here's a guy whose dad was a state senator, he was a state rep, uh, he gets appointed by plenty. Judges in general, it's they have that attitude, this is my courtroom instead of it's the people's courtroom. Mm -hmm. uh, I think he just a spoiled child that has this power and is going to use it however he wants. Mm -hmm. that's, well, they, I, I just think that's his mentality. I think you, you said but, this. But isn't there friendships in here? Doesn't he know some people? Yeah. There's you know some that? connections between my former... Okay. Yeah, we can only you speculate. Know, speculate. speculate. Yeah, it's speculate. speculation. But yeah, it's you know, yeah, I was asked, I was asked when, when I brought a piece of this case to the FBI, mm -hmm. um, what would be his motive? Um, <laughs> you, I don't know what his motive is other than it, it's been, it seems to be that the, you know, heavier and heavier weights. It's, mm -hmm. it's been a process of torture where heavier and mm -hmm. heavier weights are placed on us um, until we, we either suffocate or confess. Judge Rosenbaum said that oh, about okay. a plaintiff's case. Right. Um, yeah, that's yeah. what it feels like. Yeah, definitely. So, uh, where are we now? Uh, you, we're in a situation where he's taking the kids. You don't have a right to due process. Um, what? What? Where are the kids? I mean, supposedly they went to um, to to stay in your home with this third party person. That that never. Nothing is based in reality. Nothing is based in reality. She has n no idea where the kids are right mm -hmm. now. And my um, understanding from, from the testimony at the trial now that was took place mm -hmm. on September 11th and September 12th. In of 2013. This, of 2013. In the state court action as they just skedaddled. The kids just went to the police. Um, never ended up. Uh, immediately staying in that home. Four of them, one of them might have stayed there. I mean, we're just speculating. Uh, we did have some evidence, if you can call it evidence. Mm -hmm. um, you know, one of them might have stayed at the home. The other four went to her sister's home, Nancy Olson. Hmm. Um, but you couldn't contact. Couldn't contact your sister, the schools. Still can't. Still the schools, family members, they, no I third party can't. contact. They don't recognize yeah. her. The police. 482 days. I still have no. Two, no contact. Yeah, two of it'd the be a violation yeah. of the order. You'd be thrown in jail. And, mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, two of the children are missing. Um, so what we, you know, they're missing. She didn't even learn about 
their disappearance, um, and the two girls that are missing? Samantha and Gianna. Yeah, and they're how old? 14 and 15. Yeah. Okay. So she, you know, and I, she went to the police. They, they don't recognize her. The school hasn't reported because them Because you don't missing. have custody. Yeah, no, so not recognized. We can't talk to doesn't you? doesn't matter to, that you, you gave no. birth to children and raised them uh, for uh, 14 years in the same home. How old was Nico when this Nico happened? was 16. 16 well, years. it's doesn't amazing mean. what a court order will do. Yeah. And, and it the, has a lot of power. The father had no contact. We have to remember that, too. He yeah. didn't have contact either or by third parties. So he actually had a, um, a um, contempt charge in all of this that mm -hmm. David Knudsen took over and usurped mm -hmm. for violating that, and dismissed. that order. And, yeah. dismissed. and well, dismissed. Whole lot of issues there. We got another phone call here. So mm -hmm. uh, caller, do you have a comment or question? Well, I have a, a comment for you, Tim. I want to okay. want to thank you because I know the legislation's coming back into session here, coming up soon. Mm -hmm. And I know you spend an awful lot of time at your own time and expense lobbying down at the Capitol. Although you're actually not a lobbyist because you're you're not getting paid for it. <laughs> so I want to thank you for taking your time and your efforts to do it to protect these families out there because I know it's been a great cost and and time deal for you so I know I've seen you down there in the past and uh, I know you put a lot of hard effort in it and I just wanted to publicly thank you for doing that. Oh, thank you caller I appreciate that. A any uh, any questions or comment other than that or? Well no I know these gals okay. like it says if, if you can get the ear of somebody down there to do that I know you'll be down there trying to help whenever you can. Well and and you have been down there. Uh, yes I have. I, showed you on, on uh, film testifying. Mm -hmm. uh, I was there that same day testifying and filming and uh, you've testified uh, mm -hmm. many times and you know and then but then you realize you have guys like Senator or Representative David Knudsen down there and you go oh no wonder nothing's getting done. Well former he was a former, former. He's, he's has not been for quite some time. Right. And no, uh, another thing you have to understand is he is on the Board of Judicial Standards as well. Oh, so. that's right. He is the head of the Board on Judicial Standards. Not, well, he's he's not the executive the director, but he's the head of the board. Well, all I know is he's on the board. Yeah, uh, he's, he's the chief board member. Mm -hmm. The executive director is not mm -hmm. a board member, mm -hmm. David Paul. Uh, so if you're going to file Who a Who is gone today, or effective today? He's gone. David uh, Paul resigned effective January 3rd, which actually is tomorrow. Tomorrow. Wow, mm -hmm. I did not know that. So who's going to replace him? That will be, um, that's interesting because he waited for, he's taken a lot of heat down at the legislature uh, mm -hmm. for how he's running the shop down there. But uh, that will be interesting to see who Governor Dayton replaces him with. Well, according to the bylaws, 10 days prior to David Paul's resignation, so by the 23rd of December, the public should have been notified of who the replacement was. Okay. So, well, you haven't heard yet? I haven't heard. I don't think there's been a public announcement that's, uh, yet. That's huge, huge news for uh, judicial accountability. Uh, of course, there's a whole effort to change that. But let's get back to your case here. Right, there's uh, been ongoing actions, pervasive violations of civil and constitutional rights, Minnesota law, the judicial codes, and ongoing retaliation against me and Sandra. Mm -hmm. um, well, of which the public needs to be aware. Right. Um, so I, I don't know if you. Well, so first of all, you have the U.S. Supreme Court case. That's what we've been okay. talking about. Well, we haven't started to talk issue. about that yet. There's a lot of okay. irons in the fire because they're all, you know, what. <laughs> what what ends up happening is, you know, for instance, in the United States um, federal court action, they're going, oh, you know, your remedy is to go to, you know, back to this judge, I guess, and um, uh, make an appeal. Um, the appeal, you know, they, they, they play against one another. When you file with the judicial standards, they go, well, we don't, you know, have jurisdiction over mm -hmm. that particular uh, piece. So... Uh, what what we have done is uh, what, what's the balls that are in the air now are we have filed 
in November, we filed a petition for writ of certiorari with the United States Supreme, Supreme Court, Court, Washington, D.C. Okay. So I had to get admitted there. Um, it, um, and we filed basically because what I, uh, uh, in relation to the order, I didn't just appeal the order like you might normally appeal it. You know, mm -hmm. I appealed it. I asked for what's called a writ of mandamus, or mm -hmm. it's an injunction, a prohibition. So I asked the appellate court, our Minnesota appellate court, to basically restore this family, restore Sandra to her home, her children, bring the, the children, parents, out. both parents, uh, yeah. and uh, um, that this the, the the judge had no authority to do what he did. And our Minnesota. Uh, appellate court basically said that you know just denied the the writ. It's a it's a extraordinary remedy uh, for you know uh, severe problems with the lower courts. So mm -hmm. I went to our Minnesota uh, uh, Supreme Court. They didn't grant the petition, and then I I filed the petition with the United States Supreme Court. There's uh, great hope well. there because when I filed it, they actually. Um, um, asked for a response from um, David Rucky or wh whoever wanted right. a response. I also um, sent it to the Attorney General's office. I even filed it as an attachment to the United States uh, mm -hmm. uh, Federal Court. So um, those responses were due uh, December 23rd, non-responsive, just said mm -hmm. they're not going to do a response. I don't know that David Ruckey's attorney is admitted into the United States Supreme Court and has to be. So now it's, it's being considered by the United States Supreme Court. Which I, I think is a big deal. Now this is a, just a brief here, a copy of the brief to the U.S. Supreme Court. I read this. You know, it's... it's I've read another uh, amicus brief in another case, and I'm just going, finally, somebody's written this stuff the way it should be written to raise the issues the way they need to be raised and talk about it in the right language that it needs to be talked about. And this is another one of those mm -hmm. uh, that I've read. I mean, you're, you're, I, I can't say you're going out on a limb. You got so much support in the, in um, federal cases for what you're arguing. Um, but, lower courts and state courts just don't recognize what the Supreme Court has already really, ruled on. Really, you know, the so. United States Supreme Court jurisprudence is that the courts, which is the third branch of the government, yeah. are not to enter the realm of family. They're mm -hmm. just not to. And, and, and they, they readily do just upon the filing of a mm -hmm. divorce petition. Mm -hmm. So... Uh, if I had my dithers, the the bar for entering the realm of family would be number one. If your uh, rights are being deprived mm -hmm. um, from your children, because we all have, as parents, uh, a I call it a coeight fundamental right. A mm -hmm. fundamental right is like the air you breathe right. to our children. Right. And so we don't need to go to court to get joint custody or joint physical custody mm -hmm. or. We don't need to, but it's part of our culture that we do that when we're right. breaking up. It's a cultural issue. It's a cultural than issue. A legal issue. So, right now. so when you go to court, you know, it should be for um, <laughs> you go to court, and the very thing happens uh, that you should be going to court to for assistance. For instance, mm -hmm. you 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 you're deprived of your liberties with your children. Mm -hmm. Simple example. You can't bring your kid to a doctor unless well, you notify I mean, the other parent. This is parent. a classic example. Here's an order, no defense. Your, your children are gone. You're out of mm -hmm. your home. It's a taking of your property. There's no due process. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's just there's and and there's no uh, recourse. The mm -hmm. recourse is just shut down for you. And here's what they did in this situation. And what I really think is important that you brought up is this whole issue of temporary orders. Mm -hmm. That this is all a temporary under the mm -hmm. guise of temporary order. Mm -hmm. Meaning, well, it's just for a short period of time we can deny you your constitutional mm -hmm. rights. Mm -hmm. uh, but, you know, we realize this may take five years to sort it out. Exactly. Great point, Tim. That's what the our appellate court said. It's a temporary order, so it isn't subject to a writ of mandamus. Wait until we have a permanent order. So, And, and I will yes, let you know yes. that I've, I've helped another guy out that was under this temporary order situation 
also had Judge Knutson and <laughs> went through the Minnesota thing on that temporary order issue when the appellate courts and the U.S. Supreme Court, I mean the Minnesota Supreme Court denied the uh, uh, hearing, the appeal mm -hmm. to that, mm -hmm. which then established this whole temporary order thing. And he, his temporary mm -hmm. order lasted, you know, so two, you, two years by that time and is still going on. So, you know, is you it know? a prelude to we're going to temporarily, and they did this for her, they temporarily took her home and had somebody temporarily move in and temporarily take over her children, and she temporarily could not contact them yeah. at all. Right. I mean, uh, are they going to, uh, is, is it, I call this And now it's 400 days. and some. 482 days. days. Yeah. 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 Uh, and then what I added to the federal uh, court case, which, you know, as, as you know, I filed the federal court case mm -hmm. on September 11th. Mm -hmm. And um, I went into district court, and as I told you, my role was to present the constitutional challenge. That mm -hmm. was what I had originally um, intended for Sandra. And I went in and I had uh, just filed the federal court action. It's Sandra Grazzini Ruggi individually and on behalf of her five children mm -hmm. against uh, and all others similarly situated against David Knudsen, an individual, and also added John and Mary Doe's 1 through 20. Okay. Um, so those will come to light. But my, uh, my clear understanding is the judge is, you know, ultimately responsible. Uh, has ultimate decision-making authority. Mm -hmm. um, so what I did was I filed that on September 11th. I w went into court with Sandra. It was the day of her custody trial. It was scheduled for one day, mm -hmm. so I understood it was probably just going to be a perfunctory thing. I mean, how can you, you know, deprive a parent and have it, you know, fix it in one day? Mm -hmm. um, so I asked him to restore this family and mm -hmm. remove himself, and I notified him that I did mm -hmm. file the federal court action, and he said, no, I can be neutral, and I'm going to <laughs> proceed. So she proceeded, and I, we were ready. Uh, we were ready. We, she testified um, mm -hmm. right up until the day her children were, or she was taken away from her children. I guess right. a new, new twist. She was removed from the home and removed from her children. But, but it's both. I mean, yeah. and that's what you point out in here, that the, the children, yes, the parents have this right to their mm -hmm. children, but the children also have the right to their parents. Yes, yes. Yes. I, I thought that was very profound in here, too. That's coming to light. That's coming to light. Well, the 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 very next day, and I did um, amend, I had an opportunity to amend my um, federal complaint. Mm -hmm. um, again, on the mensis, the second day was canceled, September 12th. We showed up anyway. Mm -hmm. um, trial wasn't getting started. Mm -hmm. And when I went into court, he, he was starting the trial, so mm -hmm. we proceeded mm -hmm. with the trial. And at one point in the trial, and this was they were putting on their case now, he asked, uh, he allowed me a break so that mm -hmm. I could uh, locate a 2011 calendar. Right. Because I was cross examining some witnesses. Mm -hmm. And it's at that point when he got off the bench that deputy sheriffs came and took me in the back. So you were still in the courtroom? I was still in the courtroom. Yeah. He had gotten off the bench. We he were went just back to his started to look. office He got whatever. up, left the bench, he we stood the up. And the sheriffs came out and arrested me. Right there. And, and brought me in the back. Um, and I do have yeah. the whole thing on security video mm -hmm. that's under seal. Mm -hmm. uh, but um, what happened Which was... I want that then, so bad. <laughs> I, I want to show that. <laughs> they yep. seal these yeah. things that, uh, anyway. Yeah. So right. what happened? Then, get it. then they yeah, brought me back yeah. out. Okay, so Sandra's in the courtroom, and this is in the federal court. Actually, she sees her attorney getting arrested, so she packs up all our stuff and leaves the building. No, nope, we stood in the um, hall. They stayed. We the wait hall. out, waited in the hall. Yeah, but obviously she thinks the case is over. Her attorney just got arrested, right? right? right yeah. So there's no speculation there. The deputies just took me away. Um, but what happened was I was uh, later wheeled back, and I had handcuffs, and I was in a wheelchair because I wasn't resisting, and I came out to an empty desk, no paper, no pen, no glasses. They had taken all my jewelry. I had no shoes on. Um, and uh, they, um, I said to the judge, I, I, it was all over objection, and he said, do you want a default? And I said, no. 
um, he came out and he said something. Must, yeah, he said something must have happened during the break, and I, I just was dumbfounded. I have the sheriff behind me, you know, with a gun. <laughs> you know, this I'm sitting there in cameras. handcuffs. This is why we need yes. cameras in the um, courtroom. Yeah. To protect the judges from. And so I did, and and he, <laughs> yes, we absolutely. We pre I proceeded with the trial. And, and the people, mostly yeah. the people. Yeah, yeah. It, it proceeded with the trial, Tim. I just got to get this out. Yeah. Proceeded with the trial in, hand. in that state, and I have the distinction of being the only. First of all, I think there's only three attorneys that have ever been arrested in court. Mm. <laughs> like, and then to be brought back, and then the judge come back on the bench and have you. Continue a trial while you're yeah. sitting there under arrest with no client. By the way, she was gone. No paper. No pen. No we files. Still in handcuffs. He still did in not handcuffs. remove the handcuffs. She so I added that to the federal complaint because that was depriving her right. of a trial. Right. So you remember the first time we explained that she went there and she was, mm -hmm. you know, she had no attorney. This time, she had no. She had an, an attorney, attorney under arrest for there. her final hearing and, yeah. yeah. So. Okay, we got another I mean, caller here. It's going to get this call in here real quick. Caller, got a comment or question? Thank you. And what you were just talking about, was that also under Judge David Knutson? Yes, this, yes. This yes. Was, wow. David yeah. Knutson is one. So I had just filed the federal class action civil rights lawsuit, alerted him to, a, to the federal court to a civil rights violation, informed him of it. Uh, and he continued with the trial anyway, and actually, uh, that's how it ended up. And the next day of the trial is when he, well, she was placed under arrest. Mm -hmm. And then I'm finishing it up. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, and at the end of the trial, I just want to say this, because this is important. At the end of the trial, what he did was he looked at the uh, father's attorney and he said, do you rest your case? And the father's attorney said yes. He looked at the guardian's attorney and he said, do you rest your case? And the guardian's attorney said yes. And he looked me straight in the eye and he said, I'll take the matter under advisement. He now, didn't ask you. Didn't ask me. And technically, I had a rebuttal. Right. So, yeah, I had a rebuttal, number one. Number two... Uh, you, I want to just tell you that s there was nothing really said bad about Sandra. I mean, the father got up there and testified. That's why I'm, I'm calling it the world's last custody trial. The father didn't say anything bad about Sandra or her motherhood or anything. Hmm. Uh, the, um, and Sandra really just talked about the criminal activity in the home, mm -hmm. um, you know, just her fear and things like that. But, you know, there wasn't a, a lot of back and forth you know, slamming each other like you might normally see. Well, you see. didn't get to present your yeah. case, basically. No, I presented my case. But would not. You, but on that rebuttal aspect, you couldn't call your witnesses or. Yeah, if I wanted to. Yeah. But I really thought I uh, at the the second day because I heard her testimony, mm -hmm. and then there was not. You know, I I was thinking of a directed verdict, and yeah. I think I asked him that second day yeah. for a directed verdict based oh, on okay. the testimony you know, that we heard. Everything yeah. I've heard about uh, Judge Dave Knutson, his history, indicates that he is pretty much nothing other than a political operative, political hack, a political soldier, someone who takes his orders and he gets promotions because he performs political necessities that he's required to do. Mm -hmm. Now, my question to Tim is being down there at the Minnesota Capitol, is this the direction that... Some of the legislators in leadership are looking for matters, these kind of matters of family law. Either the Republicans, who I'm under the impression that is what Dave Knutson is, a complete Republican political operative hack, or the Democrats. And well, thanks for this good show tonight. Yeah, yeah, thank you, caller. Um, if I understood your question, a lot of legislators want to be judges. Those are their attorneys. They go into the legislature and look to be and do favors and look to be appointed as judge. Steve Simon's one of them right now. I think uh, Representative Winkler's another one. Um, they're, they're on the Republican side too, uh, but it's just, it's just part of the way to do it. You know? And so you have to pay off favors and you got to do favors in order to get it done. Okay, we don't have much time left, but anything you want to finish up here and then just 
give us a give me a brief summary of what's going to happen in U.S. Dis on on January 10th in U.S. District Court. Um, okay, fin to finish up, we need your prayers. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Pray yeah. like monks. <laughs> um, and uh, in on January tenth, it's really for all families. It is. I mean, if if we we reported what the judge did to Sandra, he's claiming judicial immunities. It's almost like judicial permission to violate civil and constitutional rights in this manner. Mm -hmm. And that is what this motion hearing is going to be about. We need need people to come to support. Sandra, to let you know uh, the 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 judge know that we're that the people are watching right. that this isn't just a, it's a closed courtroom unless other people are there right. at two o'clock. And it's a two January tenth down at uh, the U.S. Federal Court in St. Paul on Robert and Kellogg Street. Mm -hmm. uh, and I understand so you've you tried to film. You I've, said and I've they won't let. Tried you. to bring cameras. You can't get them past security mm -hmm. there, mm -hmm. and you know talk to the guards about protecting constitutional rights mm -hmm. and, oh, we just work here. Mm -hmm. so, yeah, you know, anyway, it's a long story. But, no, that they can't film in federal court, unbelievable. It just tells you the mindset of these judges mm -hmm. that the Constitution doesn't apply to them. Mm -hmm. And how can something be public and then not be filmed? Well, with freedom you of know? the press and right. Well, you're making exactly. excuses. Yeah. Oh, you're on my side. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> I get it. Yeah, how can something be public and not be filmed? Yeah. So we need to to change that as well. Absolutely. And you're so, doing a great job trying, going around. Yeah, you're trying, you're amazing, yeah. Tim. I thank you for the show and thanks well, for having Well, that's why us. I thank had you, you on. Well, no, this is serious stuff. And uh, we are praying for you and people out there. You know, I, I know you'll continue the prayers on this case for all families, but this is hard. This is hard stuff. All right. Remember, if you don't stand up for other people's liberties, who's going to stand up for yours? And remember, good men don't do nothing. Uh, God bless, and have a great week. Good night. Sets on fire